It all started with a laugh. Not hers, his. We were at a party, nothing fancy, just a casual get together with a few friends. There was a lull in the conversation, and I was scanning the room, half tuned into some story Dave was telling about his latest home renovation nightmare. And then I heard it. A laugh that cut through everything else. Deep, almost familiar, like the kind you only get from knowing someone for a long time. But it wasn't just the laugh, it was the way she reacted to it. I glanced over just in time to see her smile, the smile that wasn't meant for me, or for anyone else in the room, for that matter. It was meant for him. He wasn't anyone special. Just another face in the crowd, a guy I'd met once or twice before, but I didn't even know his last name. I wouldn't have thought much of it, except for that moment. It was small, barely noticeable, but the way her body turned toward him, like the rest of us didn't exist, it stuck with me. Maybe it was just nothing, I told myself. I mean, people laugh, right? People connect at parties, especially when they're all drinking, and it's loud, and conversations overlap. But it wasn't nothing. For the rest of the night, I couldn't stop watching. Not obsessively, at least not at first. Just, curiously. She wasn't all over him, not exactly. It was more in the subtleties, the light touches on his arm, the way she leaned in when he spoke, and how her eyes lit up in a way I hadn't seen in a while. It was the way she laughed again, loud and real, with a kind of energy I hadn't heard in years. And it wasn't just any laugh. It was that same laugh she used to give me when we first started dating, back when everything was exciting, before life turned into paying bills and deciding who's taking the trash out. By the time we left the party, I couldn't shake the feeling that something had shifted. She was quiet on the ride home, and I didn't press it. I'm not an idiot, I know people have friends, people flirt. Hell, I'd been guilty of it myself in the past, a little harmless banter here and there. But this? This didn't feel like banter. As we pulled into the driveway, she turned to me and smiled, but it was off. It was like she was forcing it, almost rehearsed. You okay? she asked, her voice soft, too casual. Yeah, I lied, glancing at her, trying to read her face in the dim light. Just tired. She kissed my cheek before hopping out of the car, and for the first time in a long time, her kiss felt like it was meant to distract me, not reassure me. I sat there for a minute after she went inside, staring at the steering wheel, my chest tight with this strange mix of confusion and dread. Something wasn't right, and I couldn't put my finger on it. It was that laugh, his laugh, her laugh, the way they connected like I wasn't even there. That's when the first crack appeared. I didn't know it yet, but that sound, that stupid laugh, was the beginning of the end. It was a Tuesday when everything clicked. The day started like any other, work, lunch, the usual. I wasn't thinking about that party anymore. In fact, I'd almost convinced myself that I'd overreacted, that maybe I'd just been tired that night, or maybe I'd had one drink too many. But that Tuesday, I was leaving work early. I'd gotten through everything ahead of schedule, and the boss was in a rare good mood, so I figured why not? Go home, relax a bit, maybe even surprise her with dinner. We hadn't had a proper night together in a while. I parked the car, walked up the driveway, and noticed something strange. Her car was there, which wasn't odd, but the house was too quiet. She was always either on the phone, playing music, or watching some show while folding laundry. That day, though, it was silent. The blinds were half-closed, and the front door was unlocked. When I stepped inside, the air felt different, like it was holding its breath. Still, I wasn't expecting anything. Not until I heard the noise from upstairs, a low murmur. Two voices. Hers and another man's. I froze, my hand still on the door, trying to make sense of what I was hearing. Part of me thought maybe I'd misheard. It could have been the TV, right? But my gut knew better. I stood there for a second longer than I should have, just listening. The voices were muffled, but they weren't casual. There was a softness in her tone, and then a low laugh that hit me like a punch to the gut. That laugh. The one I'd heard at the party. The one I hadn't heard directed at me in what felt like years. I don't know what came over me, but I walked up the stairs without even thinking about it. 
My feet moved on their own, slow and deliberate, as if giving them more time would make what I was about to see somehow less real. The door to our bedroom was cracked open. I could hear her voice clearly now, something about how she had to be careful, how he didn't suspect anything. I didn't need to hear more. I pushed the door open, and there they were for my wife, sitting on the edge of our bed, fully clothed, but too close to the man standing in front of her. His back was to me, but her face, she froze the second she saw me. The blood drained from her cheeks. I'll never forget the look in her eyes. It wasn't shock, it was fear. Fear that I knew. Fear that it was all coming crashing down. What the hell is this? I didn't yell. I just stood there, staring at them, my voice low, calm, like I was asking about some forgotten errand. But inside, everything was tearing apart. He spun around, some guy I barely recognized from that party. And I could tell from the way his face paled that he hadn't expected this, hadn't planned for me to walk in and ruin whatever moment they were having. Get out, I said to him. Still calm. I wasn't sure why I wasn't screaming or throwing him through the window. Maybe I was saving that for later. But at that moment, I just wanted him gone. He didn't hesitate, just grabbed his jacket and practically ran out of the room, brushing past me without a word. Coward. And then it was just us. Me and her. The silence between us stretched out for what felt like forever. She didn't move. I didn't move. I wasn't sure what was going to happen next, but I knew whatever she had to say would mean nothing. Nothing could fix what I'd just seen. It's not what you think, she finally said, her voice shaky, her hands trembling in her lap. I laughed. A short, bitter laugh that surprised even me. You're sitting in our bedroom with some other guy, and you're telling me it's not what I think? She opened her mouth to say something, then stopped. For once, she didn't have an answer. I didn't move from the doorway. I just stood there, looking at her, waiting for something. I wasn't even sure what an apology, an excuse, anything that made sense. But she didn't have anything, not at first. She just sat there on the edge of our bed, staring at the floor like it would somehow help her. So, are you gonna explain this? I said, my voice still flat. There was no screaming. It felt like screaming wouldn't even cover it. I, it's not what it looks like, she repeated, still not looking at me. What is it, then? I stepped forward, closing the gap between us. What's the explanation here? You were just catching up with an old friend? Having a deep conversation about life? She finally looked up at me, eyes wide, desperate. He's a friend. We've been talking, but it hasn't gone that far. I swear. I swear it hasn't, she stopped herself, realizing how weak she sounded. I couldn't believe it. Hasn't gone that far? That's what she was leading with? Like that made it okay? Like that was some kind of saving grace? I didn't even know what to say to that, the anger bubbling up in me now. And what's that far? What does that mean? You've only been flirting in our house, on our bed? I shot back, my voice rising. No, she said quickly, standing up now, almost like she was trying to meet me on the same level. It's not like that. We haven't, you know, we haven't done anything physical. I laughed again, that same bitter, disbelieving laugh. So I'm supposed to be okay with this because you didn't technically sleep with him yet? It's not like that, she cried, her voice shaky, frustrated. It just, it got out of hand. I didn't mean for it to happen. Didn't mean for what to happen? For you to sit here with him while I'm at work? For you to lie to my face for how long now? I stepped closer, and she backed away. Good. She should be scared. I wasn't trying to hurt you, she said, tears forming in her eyes. I didn't plan this. I didn't plan any of it. It just... It just happened, right? I finished for her. The same way it just happened at the party when you were all over him? The same way you've been sneaking around, hoping I wouldn't notice? My voice was colder now, sharper. I wasn't sneaking around, she said, her voice breaking. I was confused. 
I've been confused, and he, he was just there. It was just talking at first. I shook my head, feeling my fists clench at my sides. You're telling me this wasn't physical? That's what you're hanging on to? Like that makes it any better? She didn't respond this time. She just stood there, tears rolling down her face, her mouth slightly open, but no words came out. She was stuck, caught in her own lie. Why him? I asked, my voice low again, quieter. The anger was still there, but now it was mixed with something else, something that hurt more. Why him? What was it about him that made you throw everything away? She wiped at her eyes, shaking her head. I wasn't throwing anything away. I, I don't know why. It wasn't about him. It was about, it was about me. I felt like she stopped, and then her face hardened like she was gearing up to say something she knew would hurt. I felt like you didn't care anymore. I stared at her, the words landing like a slap. Didn't care? I repeated. I didn't care? Are you serious? I felt alone, she shouted suddenly, her voice raw, almost angry now. You were never around anymore. You were either working or distracted or too tired to even notice me. I took a step back, trying to process what she was saying. So this is my fault now? I'm not saying it's your fault, she said, her voice calming again, but still shaky. I'm just saying that I felt like you didn't care. And I didn't know what to do. So, instead of talking to me about it, you decided to talk to him? I snapped, my temper flaring again. You didn't think to maybe, I don't know fix whatever was wrong between us? You just jumped to the first guy who gave you attention? It wasn't like that, she said softly. It wasn't about attention. It just happened. It got out of control, and I didn't know how to stop it. Well, you should have figured it out before I had to walk in on the two of you, I shot back, my voice hard. I don't care how confused you were, or how lonely you felt. You don't do this. You don't sit in our bedroom with some other guy and act like it's nothing. She didn't say anything after that. She just stood there, looking small and broken, but I wasn't feeling any sympathy. Not now. All I could think about was how easily she had lied to me. How easily she had thrown away everything we'd built. I turned and walked out of the room before I could say anything else. If I stayed, I didn't trust myself to keep calm. I left the house after that, needing air, needing to be away from her. I didn't go far, just to the driveway, leaning against the car and staring at nothing. The silence was choking me, but it gave me time to think. I wasn't the type to yell or throw things. That's not who I am. But sitting there, I knew I couldn't let her get away with this. It wasn't just about the affair, it was about everything. The lies, the sneaking around, making me feel like a fool. She needed to understand what it felt like, what she had done to us. To me. I stayed out there for a while, long enough for the sun to start setting. When I walked back inside, she was sitting at the kitchen table, looking like she'd been crying the whole time. I didn't say a word as I walked past her and into the bedroom. She called my name, trying to get me to talk, but I ignored her. I grabbed my laptop and sat down on the bed, her perfume still hanging in the air. It made me sick. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. The bills, the accounts, all the small things that kept our life running smoothly, I handled them. She never even thought about that side of things. And I knew exactly where to start. Logging into the bank account, I transferred a chunk of our savings enough to make a point, but not enough for her to report anything. I sent the money to an old account I kept in case I ever needed it. Call it a backup plan, but now it felt like the smartest thing I'd ever done. Next, I moved on to the phone bill. It didn't take long to cancel her line. She could go figure out her own plan. I cancelled the Netflix account that was under my name, too, she could start paying for her own entertainment. Small things, maybe, but every click felt like a victory. It didn't stop there. I knew she had a work presentation the next day, something big she'd been preparing for. I went into the folder on the shared drive, the one where she stored her presentation files. She didn't realize that giving me access meant I could delete anything I wanted. 
I hovered over the folder for a second, thinking maybe this was too much. Then I deleted it. Gone, without a trace. She walked into the room while I was finishing up. What are you doing? She asked, her voice still small, like she was scared to know the answer. Fixing things, I said flatly, not even looking at her. She didn't ask more. Maybe she knew she'd pushed too far, and I wasn't done yet. She deserved every bit of this, and I didn't feel the slightest bit of guilt about it. After that, I went into our email account, the one she'd used for years. She'd had it since before we met, so most of her personal stuff was still tied to it. I didn't delete the account. Instead, I went in and changed the password. She'd have a fun time trying to recover everything tied to that email. Why are you doing this, she asked, finally realizing what was happening. Her voice was shaky, trying to hold back more tears. She stepped closer, but I didn't even look at her. Why do you think? I snapped. This is just the start. You want to mess with my life? I'll tear yours apart. Her face crumpled. I could see it out of the corner of my eye, but I didn't care. Not anymore. You can't just, she started, but I cut her off. I can. I just did. I stood up, closing the laptop, and turned to face her. She looked broken, like everything was crashing down around her. But it wasn't enough for me. Not yet. I want you out of the house tomorrow, I said, my voice cold. You can go stay with him, or whoever. I don't care. But I want you gone. Her face dropped completely, like she hadn't thought I'd go that far. Where am I supposed to go, she asked, her voice trembling. I already told you. Figure it out. You wanted to play around behind my back? Now deal with the consequences. She didn't say anything else after that. She just stood there, stunned, like the reality of it all was finally sinking in. I walked out of the room, feeling a strange kind of satisfaction. She wasn't going to get away with this. Not without understanding what it felt like to lose everything. That night, I didn't sleep much. I stayed on the couch, staring at the ceiling, going over everything in my head. The satisfaction from earlier, the revenge, it felt good for a while. But as the hours passed, that feeling started to fade. By morning, I was exhausted, not just physically, but mentally. I heard her moving around upstairs, probably packing her things, and for a moment, I thought about letting it all go. But that anger, the betrayal, it wasn't gone. It was still there, simmering under the surface. She came down eventually, holding a small suitcase, eyes red from crying. She didn't say anything at first, just stood there, waiting. I sat up, rubbed my face, and looked at her. Do you really want this? she asked quietly. Is this really how it's going to end? I didn't answer right away. I didn't know what to say. Part of me wanted to scream, to throw everything out into the open, but another part of me was just tired of it all. The silence stretched out between us until she finally sat down on the armchair across from me, setting the suitcase by her feet. I messed up, she said, her voice soft. I know that. I know I hurt you. But can we just talk about it? Please? I looked at her, and for the first time in days, I felt something other than anger. There was still a lot of pain, still betrayal. But now there was also this deep sadness. This was the person I'd shared my life with, the person I thought I'd grow old with, and here we were on opposite sides, barely able to speak without it falling apart. What's there to talk about? I said, not harshly, just tired. You made your choice. She wiped her eyes and shook her head. It wasn't a choice. I didn't wake up one day and decide to ruin everything. It just, things between us weren't good, and I didn't know how to fix it. I stared at her, my chest tight. And you thought cheating was the way to fix it? No, she said quickly, her voice cracking. I wasn't thinking. I was stupid. I just... I felt so alone. And when he came along, I didn't even realize how far it had gone until it was too late. I wanted to scream at her, tell her how selfish that sounded, but I didn't. I just sat there, 
feeling the weight of her words. She wasn't saying anything I didn't already know, but hearing it out loud felt different. It wasn't just some abstract idea anymore. It was real, and it was right in front of me. I didn't mean for this to happen, she whispered, her voice barely audible. I didn't want to hurt you. I leaned forward, elbows on my knees, and looked at her. But you did. She nodded, her eyes filling with tears again. I know. We sat there in silence for a long time, the weight of everything pressing down on us. The anger wasn't as sharp anymore, but it wasn't gone either. I couldn't just forgive her for this. It wasn't that easy. But at the same time, I knew this moment was it. This was the turning point, the moment where we decided what happened next. I don't know if I can get past this, I finally said, my voice low. I don't know if I even want to. She didn't say anything at first. Just sat there, tears streaming down her face, waiting for me to finish. But part of me wonders if we're just throwing everything away too fast, I continued, more to myself than to her. I mean, eight years, and now this? I don't know if there's anything left to save. She swallowed hard, wiping her eyes again. I'll do anything. I know I messed up, but I'll do whatever it takes to fix this. I don't want to lose you. I don't want us to be over. I looked at her, and for a moment, I felt that same old pull. The part of me that remembered why I fell in love with her in the first place. The life we'd built together, the good moments, the history. But it wasn't enough to erase what she'd done. I need time, I said finally. I can't decide this right now. I just need time to figure out what the hell I even want. She nodded, biting her lip, trying to hold back more tears. Okay. Take all the time you need. I don't know if that means we can work it out, I said, standing up. But I'll let you know when I figure it out. She nodded again, standing too, looking smaller than I'd ever seen her. She picked up her suitcase and walked toward the door. She hesitated for a second, like she wanted to say something else, but then she just nodded to herself and left. And just like that, I was alone. After she left, the silence in the house was different. It wasn't the usual quiet where you can still hear the hum of life in the background. This was heavier. Everything felt hollow. For days, I moved around the place like a ghost, trying to pretend it was just another normal week. But every time I walked into the bedroom or passed by the kitchen where we used to sit and talk, it hit me all over again. The anger wasn't as sharp anymore, but the betrayal? That stayed. It hung in the air, in every corner of the house, in every routine that used to feel solid and safe. I didn't contact her, and she didn't try to reach out, which was for the best. I wasn't ready to hear anything from her. I didn't know if I ever would be. About a week after she'd left, I sat down at the kitchen table, staring at the empty seat across from me, the one where she used to sit. I tried to imagine how we'd even get back to normal if we ever tried. I pictured her sitting there again, us pretending like nothing had happened, forcing small talk over dinner, pretending we could just move on. It wasn't possible. I thought about everything we'd built together over the years. All the small things, the little habits, the inside jokes, the trips we'd taken. And now, all of it felt like a lie. How was I supposed to move past something like that? Even if we tried to patch things up, that betrayal would always be there, lurking just beneath the surface. I realized something sitting there, in the quiet of our kitchen, I didn't want to live the rest of my life wondering if I could trust her again. I didn't want to spend every day looking over my shoulder, waiting for the other shoe to drop. I didn't want to become the kind of person who constantly second-guesses everything, paranoid that it might happen again. I had two options, either forgive her, try to rebuild from the wreckage, or walk away. But the more I thought about it, the clearer the answer became. This wasn't something I could fix. And it wasn't something I could forgive. Later that afternoon, I called her. The conversation was short. I told her I wasn't interested in trying to work things out, that I didn't see any future where we could go back to the way things were. She didn't argue, didn't try to change my mind. She just said she understood, her voice quiet, defeated. We agreed to meet to discuss the logistics, dividing things up, 
sorting out what was hers and what was mine. It wasn't the emotional conversation I'd been dreading. It was more like two business partners dissolving a contract. We weren't husband and wife anymore, we were just two people untangling what was left of our life together. In the end, I didn't feel relief. Not right away. It didn't feel like some big moment of closure, or like I'd finally done the right thing. It just felt, necessary. Like this was the only way it could end. A few weeks later, after everything was finalized, I sat on the couch with a beer in hand, the place a little emptier without her stuff around. But it was mine again. And that mattered. For the first time in a long time, I wasn't waiting for something to go wrong. I wasn't on edge, wondering what else she was hiding. This was the end of us, but it wasn't the end of me. What did I learn? That's the question everyone asks when things fall apart, right? What did I take away from all this? I guess, more than anything, I learned that sometimes things just break. You don't always get a clean explanation, or a reason that makes sense. People change, situations change, and sometimes, no matter how hard you try, you can't fix what's already cracked. It was over. And I was okay with that. Not happy, not relieved, just okay. Life moves on. I don't know what comes next for me, and I'm not in a rush to figure it out. But I do know one thing for sure, I won't make the same mistake again. I won't ignore the signs. I won't let someone get that close just to rip everything apart. Whatever comes next, it's going to be on my terms. And that's enough for now.